welcome. Let's relax and enjoy this video. Let's look at the urethra. The urethra is a fibromuscular tube that begins at the neck of the urinary bladder. This is the urinary bladder, and this is where the urine is stored until when it is filled to capacity. And when the time is ready for it to be released, pass through the urethra to the external environment. This is the configuration that we have. This is the urinary bladder. This is the urethra through which the urine that is produced in the kidney runs to be emptied into the urinary bladder for storage. Over time, it gets filled, and there's no other channel through which it will pass to be released to the external environment other than the urethra. The urethra, considering the function that they carry out in helping to release urine to the outside, they have urethral sphincters, which helps to control or direct the path through which this urine will, will run. And we have two major types. So we have the internal urethral sphincter, and this is the internal urethral sphincter. This is seen at the beginning of the urethra. This is the urinary bladder. And after the urinary bladder, the next structure that we we'll see is the urethra. So this is where the urethra begins from around the neck of the urinary bladder. And it is at this point that we have the internal urethral sphincter from the name internal, it is on the inside. So it tends to like regulate the rate at which urine is being released so it's like a guide or a control channel that is formed by smooth muscle, which action cannot be controlled. So it is involuntary. We cannot control the action of this sphincter. And after which deep down, we now have the external urethral sphincter. So the external urethral sphincter is distal to the internal urethral sphincter. And this is the external urethral sphincter. This is a voluntary type of sphincter. We can actually control the action of this sphincter because it is formed by skeletal muscle. You see that their fibers are attached to the hip bone on both sides. So this is the hip bone. This is another region of the hip bone on the other side. And that is when we try to illustrate that at times when you feel like you're urinating and the pressure is intense, there are times that you feel that the urine is almost getting to the outside, but you are still able to control it because of the voluntary action of the external urethral sphincter that is exhibited during that process. So you are still able to hold the urine at least for some time before you can now finally go and urinate. So those are the two sphincters that we have in the urethra that helps to control the rate or direct the path through which urine move and also control the release of urine out of the body. And it can also be seen in this image. This is the urinary bladder. This is the internal urethral sphincter just at the neck of the urinary bladder. The more distally, we have the external urethral sphincter that is seen just below the prostate gland. This is the prostate gland highlighted in blue. This is seen just around the membranous part of the urethra. So talking about the urethra, there is variation in the length of the urethra in both male and female, and that is understandable because of the length of the penis. In male, it is about 20 cm in length, and it is this long because it needs to travel through the entire length of the penis. This is where the urethra begins from at the neck of the urinary bladder. You see it running through the prostate gland. Then at this point, it needs to also run through the entire length of the penis. No matter how long the penis is, it is still going to run through it because that is the only channel that it has to pass through before it can be released into the external environment. So it makes the length of the urethra to be about 20 cm in male. And in female, it is different. It is shorter in females, about 5 cm in length. And this is because it does not need to run through any structure in the anterior wall of the pelvic cavity. So it's, this is the urinary bladder. And what the urethra needs to do is to convey urine from this point down just to be released into the external environment. So it's shorter in female while it is longer in male. Let's look a bit more critical on the male urethra. We said that it's longer. So let's try and see these various subdivisions that the male urethra presents. It extends from the neck of the urinary bladder down to this region. Apart from being subdivided based on the region where they run, they also have some form of differences in terms of the type of epithelium that lines them and also their morphology. So let's take a look at this. The first region will be the preprostatic urethra. The preprostatic urethra from the name, it means the urethra before the prostate. We said that the prostate is located distal to the neck of the urinary bladder. So if you have the prostate gland in this region and it is what we highlight in blue, 
This is the prostate gland. It means the very short part that the urethra run just at the exit point of the urinary bladder down to where it penetrates into the prostate gland. Just this short distance is called the pre-prostatic urethra. And this region is lined by transitional epithelium. It is lined by transitional epithelium because it tends to be continuous with the epithelium lining of the urinary bladder. Remember when we had a lecture on the urinary bladder, we said that the mucosa lining is formed by transitional epithelium. And this transitional epithelium tends to be continuous with what you have at the superior part of the urethra. And the next region is the prostatic urethra. And this is the prostatic urethra. The prostatic urethra is from this region down to this region. It is basically the region that runs through the prostate. And that is why it's called the prostatic urethra. This region is completely embedded within the prostate gland. So you have the prostate gland surrounding it. It is the widest in terms of caliber, and it is seen to be lined also with transitional type of epithelium. So it tends to have a continuous lining with what you have in the upper part, which is the preprostatic urethra. So it's also lined by the transitional type of epithelium. Another feature that is seen in the prostatic urethra is that it has sinuses through which the secrets of the prostate gland is released to be emptied into the urethra. It is through these prostatic sinuses that this release is done before it's able to be released into the cavity of the urethra. We also have the orifice for the ejaculatory duct. We have the ejaculatory duct that is bringing the semen that is already synthesized or produced in the testes. So it runs and it is released through this ejaculatory duct. This ejaculatory duct also pierces the wall of the prostatic urethra so as to empty its content into it. So it means that the male urethra has dual function of transporting urine and also transporting semen. So they transport urine that is released from the urinary blood and they also transport semen. These two substances are able to pass through the urethra before to be released into the external environment. So it is at the region of the prostatic urethra that you have the emptying of the ejaculatory duct, which is carrying the semen. And within this prostatic urethra, we also have the release of the prostate gland itself. We say that prostate gland helps to also release substances that give nutrients to the semen. Then the next region is the membranous urethra. This is a very short part that it runs just distal from the prostate gland down to the bulb of the penis. The bulb of the penis is like the root of the penis where the penis begins from. So from this region to this region is the membranous urethra. This is the narrowest part of the urethra and it is seen to be lined with a pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. You can see that there's a change in epithelium lining from being transitional in the preprostatic urethra and the prostatic urethra down to being pseudo stratified columnar epithelium in the membranous urethra. So that is how it changes. Then the next one is the spongy urethra. From the name, it means it runs through the corpus spongiosum of the penis. If you look at the wall of the penis, this image up here shows a T section of the penis. If you try to slice the penis in transverse section, this is what we would see. We would see two bulk of muscles up and one below, just as when you have the eyes placed on top and nose below. That is what I used to represent what we see in the penis. So you have corpus cavernosus. We have one on the right and one on the left. And just inferior to the two, around their mid plane, you see the corpus spongiosum. This corpus spongiosum is the muscle bundle that actually houses the urethra. So it is through the corpus spongiosum that you have the urethra running through. And that is why you have the name being tagged as spongy urethra. So this is the configuration of the penis. It is made up of three bundles of muscles, and this is how they are arranged. So it is within the structure that is located below which is the corpus spongiosum that we have this spongy part of the urethra running through before it's finally emptied into the external environment. Around the bulb of the penis, around this upper region, we have orifices that open for the bulbo urethral gland. So the bulbo urethral gland tends to release its contents into the, the spongy part of the urethra. So the gland is located somewhere around this region and tends to release its contents into the terminal part of the urethra.
And as the urethra goes down around the glands penis, there's a form of dilation around this region that is called the navicular fossa. The navicular fossa is like a dilation of the spongy urethra that is seen around the glands penis. And what this does is that it helps to increase the flow rate of urine as it is being released to the external environment. For the spongy urethra, it is lined by pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium. The spongy urethra is lined by the same epithelium that lines the membranous urethra. Also to add that the terminal part of the spongy urethra is lined by a stratified squamous type of epithelium because this terminal part tends to be continuous with the epithelium lining of the skin. We know that the epithelium lining the skin is a stratified squamous type of epithelium. Just as what we see in the upper part of the urethra where the epithelium lining of the urinary bladder tends to be continuous with what is seen in the upper part of the urethra. So also we have towards the exit part where the epithelium lining is also continuous with what is seen in the skin. The spongy part of the urethra is the longest because it needs to run through the entire length of the penis. So the functions of the male urethra would then include that it helps to convey urine stored in the urinary bladder down to the external environment. It also helps in the transportation of semen because we know that at the prostatic region of the urethra, there is an opening of the ejaculatory dot, which tends to release the semen that is being produced into it. So it also allowed transportation of semen apart from urine. So it has like a dual function in this regard. For the female urethra, the female urethra do not need to run the long course before they are emptied into the external environment. They are opened into the vestibule. The vestibule is the space between the labial minora. This is the clitoris. So within this space, we have the opening of the urethra just posterior to the clitoris and anterior to the vagina. So this is the vagina opening that leaks into the uterus. You have it below because the uterus is located behind the urinary bladder. We have the vagina canal which opens into the vestibule. And this is seen posterior to the opening of the urethra, which is the urethra orifice. So within this space, we have two openings. We have the one for the urethra and we have one posteriorly for the vagina. More posteriorly outside the vestibule, we then have the anus. So the anus is at the back. We have three openings in female. Also, the epithelium lining of the female urethra is also kind of similar to what we have in the male, but it's a bit less complicated. For the female urethra, the upper two-third of the female urethra is lined by a transitional type of epithelium because this tends to be continuous with the epithelium lining of the urinary bladder. Then for the distal one-third, the epithelium lining here is a stratified squamous type of epithelium, and this epithelium tends to be continuous with the epithelium lining of the skin because we know that this distal region will open up to be continuous with the skin. The function of the female urethra, the female urethra is solely responsible for the transportation of urine. And that is what is specifically designed for from the urinary bladder. It helps to convey urine from there down to be released to the outside. Blood supply. The blood supply of the urethra is very complicated, are also very interesting. In male, the different regions of the urethra are supplied by different vessels, although they all emerge from the internal iliac artery. We already talked about the internal iliac artery that runs into the pelvic cavity to supply structures that are located within it the pre-prostatic part of the urethra and the prostatic part of the urethra are being supplied by the inferior vesical artery. We already talked about the vesical artery, the superior one emerging from the upper part of the internal iliac and the inferior vesical artery emerging from the lower part of the internal iliac artery. So the supply of the upper part of the urethra, which includes the pre-prostatic and the prostatic part of the urethra are being supplied by the inferior vesical artery. So this is where they, they supply, and this is logical. For the membranous the urethra, they are supplied by the bulbourethral artery, which is a branch of the internal pudendal artery. And the internal pudendal artery, we know that is a branch of the internal iliac artery. The spongy urethra receive direct supply from the internal pudendal artery. The female urethra is supplied by branches from the internal pudendal artery, the vagina artery, then we also have supply from the inferior vesical artery, which also is a branch of the vagina artery. 
For clinical anatomy, I would like to talk about the urinary tract infection. This is infection that tends to enter into the body through the opening of the urethra. Because the urethra in female is short, this tends to be common in female. Infection goes through the opening and they drive in. They may even move as far as the kidney. Major symptoms include pelvic pain. There will be increased urge to urinate, frequent urination that will come with pain. And also blood may be seen in the urine. The treatment option is the use of antibiotics. So thanks for watching this video. Let's meet again.